the clouds. Collaboration. So as an architect, I've been collaborating for the last 17 years on different types of projects. And each project and each year, collaboration has changed and will continue to change. So why do we collaborate? So think back to when we were kids playing in a sandbox or at the beach, and hopefully we played with other kids and played well with other kids. But we used our imagination to the resources we had, whether that was just a plastic cup or a pail in a bucket. We came together to collaborate on who was gonna go get the water, who was gonna dig in the sand, and who was gonna compact the sand into the cup. Well, efficiently, we came together and we built our sand castle before a huge wave would come and destroy that. But before that happened, we stood proud of the huge task that we did together as a team. So on a larger scale of collaborating, let's talk about the pyramids. Everyone learned about the Great Pyramid. Not that pyramid. <laughs> not, the, not the Luxor that was probably built in about 18 months. But back to the Great Pyramid. So the Great Pyramid was constructed, it was completed in 2560 BC, and it took about 20 years to complete. Yes, 20 years. It's estimated about 20 to 25,000 workers throughout that 20 years that collaborated together. Its original height for the pyramid is about 480 feet, and its base side is 755 feet. So we asked, how did they collaborate? They didn't have the resources we had today, but they had the land, they had the ground, so they were able to lay this out one-to-one, -one, pieces of it to determine the best location for the pyramid. So they had those, in ironically, they had water and sand as well. So they had those that were in charge of hauling, those in charge of the materials, and those that were just the laborers. But they collaborated together to construct about 800 tons a day to build their city of the future. So as I mentioned, we started on the ground with collaborating together. And as architects, we started with paper. And we had to collaborate with each other, we had to coordinate with each other, especially with our consultants. So how do we do that back then? So we had to make a reproduction, probably mail over a drawing, and they would have to retrace that on the light table. Then came 2D CAD, and then 3D CAD. And around that time, I know some of us, as, as well as myself, we were emailing these files out. And then we had 3D softwares like Revit come out, and that file size increased where we weren't able to mail these out, so we had to burn it on CD, or burn it on the DVD, call for a runner to pick that up, get that delivered, or vice versa. So it was a lot of time and a lot of money spent on just that. So when we started our project at LEX, we knew it was gonna be a large project and a large team. So thankfully Autodesk had created the cloud collaboration that we were excited to implement into our project. Now at the top of this pyramid, you see a question mark. So that question mark represents the future and what the future holds. So we can only imagine what that future holds, but I can tell you right now, I'm already looking at smart helmets and smart glasses to how we can collaborate in design as well as in the field. So what is the cloud? So the cloud had all of our files where we were able to upload, we were able to download, a lot of informative information we were able to share, collaborate, and coordinate. And the great thing about the cloud was whether it was the owner, the builder, their subs, us architects, or the consultants, we were able to access all of those files anywhere and anytime. So I'm gonna give you an overview of our project at LEX. It's called Midfield Satellite Concourse to give you an understanding of how large the project was, and then I'll go over how large of our team was. So as mentioned, it's at LEX. LAX is one of the gateways into the United States. It's the fourth busiest in the world and the second in the United States. It sees about 80 million passengers. We were excited to have that connectivity to LAX because we know of the future, the LAX has the future plans to have that connectivity to the city of Los Angeles. 
LAX is in the midst of a $14 billion capital improvement program with a baggage optimization project. And now I mentioned the baggage project because LAX will be the first in the United States to implement the individual carrier system, which is also known as the ICS, as their baggage system. So we're really excited. It's going to be more efficient. It's going to be smarter technology. Of that $14 billion capital improvement, our project is a little more than 10% of that at $1.6 billion. So in this rendering here, in the foreground, you'll see the new concourse consists of 12 new gates that will be serving Group 5 and Group 6 aircrafts. And for those that are not familiar with the Group 6 aircrafts, those are the Airbus A380s. Those are the double-deckers. You can see one there in the center there in the rendering. Now, in the background, that's the existing LAX ter terminal, international terminal. So we had a lot of different projects, for a lot of different scopes. So I'll kind of go over that in this next slide. So everything in gray here is the existing terminal at LEX, is all the terminals, domestic and international. And so what I've done here is in the blue, you'll see our scope, our project. The darker blue represents any of our structures that are going to be above ground. The lighter blue will be, or represents the tunnels that we have underground. Now, we had two different types of tunnels. We had a passenger tunnel. And then we have the utility tunnel that's going to serve that ICS, the baggage system, as well as as well as the hydronic piping. And you can see that connectivity from our project to LEX. Now, as I mentioned, it's going to be serving the A380. So all of those underground tunnels had to be designed to sustain that A380 load. And now to compare it to the Great Pyramid that I mentioned. So as I mentioned, the Great Pyramid is 480 feet in height, and the base side is about 755 feet. So what I've done is I've taken, taken that concourse, and I've turned it vertically, and it sits at 1,670 feet linear feet, which would be the fifth tallest building in the world if it was vertical. As you can see, it'll be three stacked pyramids. And I've also shown the tunnels to kind of give you a reference. Most of them are about two, two pyramids high, and the other ones are one pyramid high. What I've also done here is I've taken it horizontally to give you a scale of comparing it to the base of the pyramid. Now, the concourse will only wrap two sides, but I wanted to point out, if you were to take all of our tunnels, we would be 3,100 linear feet, and it would be able to wrap the entire base of the Great Pyramid. Now, we, uh, the total project square footage, as mentioned by Jacob, is over a million square feet. So our team, our project delivery was design build. And for those not familiar with design build, it's basically taking the design and construction services contractually in a one single entity. So this was our team. So we had three different architecture firms. We had four different structural engineers. We had two different electrical engineers. We had a lighting designer. We had wayfinding, special systems, mechanical plumbing. The list continues to grow. Now, because we were design build, most of us co-located into a project site office that consisted of 30 trailers put together. We were known as the Taj Mahal of the LAX trailer compound. Unfortunately, not everyone could co-locate into those 30 trailers. So everyone listed up here in black is all those that co-located. So we had the owner, we had the builder, we had the architecture firm, and then we had civil engineers there. So that allowed us to collaborate daily most of the time hourly, with each other. Now, at the bottom of the slide, you'll see I have one of the architects in blue, and it has an asterisk. So what that represents <clears throat> is we had outside offices helping us. So Corgan has the LA office. We utilized our Dallas office and our Phoenix office to help on this project. So as I mentioned, we can all co-locate. And to make it more chaotic, as not everyone was using the same software, so we had some using AutoCAD, some using Civil 3D, some using Illustrator, some just giving us information on Word. But most of us was using Revit, as you can see here. <clears throat> so to give you an idea of how many Revit models we had, we had 74. I won't even get to how many CAD files we had, so I just put 100 plus there. 
So just architectural models, we had 17 architectural models. We had 11 that the owner provided us for any of the areas that we were tying into. And our consultant models was 46 Revit models. So for all of us using Revit, we implemented collaboration for Revit. And what that allowed us to do is to run live with each other. So for us on the architect side, we were able to have our Dallas team and our Phoenix team work in the same models at their location and at their time zone. For our consultant running live with us, if we were to make a change, we would sync that and they would sync it, reload it, and they would see that change instantly. Unfortunately, not all of them were running live with us, but they all had a license to publish the collaboration for Revit. So we implemented a schedule so they would be able to publish that, we would see their changes right away. Collaboration for Revit also allowed us to manage all of our models. We were able to monitor syncs, make sure we didn't have more than a few people syncing on top of each other. We were able to monitor how many users are in each model. We were able to communicate with each other. And I wanted to point out that our Revit models were in the forefront of BIM management, so we implemented some um, parameters in the models so it could be used for our builder for cost estimating, as well as any future technologies that the owner had on their softwares. So collaboration for Revit worked hand in hand with BIM 360 team. So the entire team was able to use BIM 360 team, whether they were Revit or whatever software they were using. So there's a little snippet here of what our hub looks like on BIM 360 team. So we house all our files there so they could get their existing files. We can share files, they can upload, download. We could provide information like templates for their civil 3D and for Revit. And if they were looking for a background, doesn't matter what platform they were using, CAD, PDF, they were able to find that on BIM 360. So more importantly is we were archiving our Revit models. So contractually, we, we had to provide access our, to the owner at any time they were wanted to have access to our Revit models. So we implemented a weekly schedule where we were uploading our Revit models, so it acted as our archive, as well as giving the owner access to the models. So what BIM 360 team in collaboration for Revit helped us do was to take all that chaos and come together as one team, efficiently collaborate together, and build our pyramid together. No more chaos there. So we have started construction. We've now sent, added a new trailer on top of the project site office. So we have two trailers. Our team is now about 275, and it does not include any of our subconsultants or any of, our, um, any of the trades on the building side. Our builder is still using the cloud using BIM 360 Glue. I think we have about over 130 users on the cloud on the glue. Also, on the design time, we're still, we're, just, we're still using virtual reality, and we help guide the owner on some of the artwork selection that needs to still be done for the concourse. So as mentioned before, we're over a million square feet at $1.6 billion. The cloud allowed us to design and meet our schedule in two years. And as I mentioned, we're in construction. We've been in construction for about a year. It will be completed in early 2020. And to be very honest with you, I was very cautious in the beginning using the cloud because it was so new. It was a large project and a large team. But knowing now that I know the success we had, of all the time that we saved, all the money that we saved as not only our firms, but the owner as well. I know all future projects, we're gonna be using the cloud or whatever future collaboration comes about. So can we all imagine what the great pharaohs could have done if they had the cloud collaboration? <laughs> I know my team is very excited for the completion of the concourse. I hope every single one of you has the opportunity to walk the concourse when it's completed in 2020. And remember the success we had using the cloud and, and appreciate our city of the future, our masterpiece, Midfold Satellite Concourse. Thank you.